Hello students, and welcome to our chapter on business fluctuations. I'm going to derive for you the dynamic aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, okay? Um, the key word here is the dynamic feature, because um, when we put on the graph, normally you're used to seeing levels, but we're actually gonna be expressing growth rates here, okay? Um, so to get from static to dynamic, we're gonna get start at the static version of the quantity theory of money equation. Okay. And that's M times V equals P times YR. So this version right here is static. It's expressed in levels. And we're gonna to go to the dynamic version of that which is gonna be the growth rate of M plus the growth rate of V is equal to the growth rate of P plus the growth rate of Y, okay? Now, the growth rate of M represents the money supply growth. The growth rate of V represents the growth in the velocity of money. And the growth rate of P is the growth in the rate of prices. So it's the growth in the price level. And we can also denote this as pi, which represents the inflation rate. And then YR is real GDP. And we can express that as real growth. Well, what is M plus V? Well, it's the growth rate of the money supply plus the growth rate of velocity. Now, velocity is how many times in a period, a year, that you spend the same dollar, okay? And so, for given a certain growth rate of money times the number of times you use it for sp spending, that gives you your, um, your amount, total amount of spending this is the growth rate of spending in that sense, okay? So this is spending growth equals the inflation rate, which is the growth rate of prices plus real growth, okay? Now, if we solve for the inflation rate and rearrange this equation, then we could rewrite this as the inflation rate is equal to spending growth minus real growth. And this makes sense because when you think about the notion of inflation, it can come from too much money chasing too few goods. And so if the spending growth rate, the money that's chasing the real goods, exceeds the growth of those real goods, then you're gonna have a positive inflation rate. Prices are gonna rise. So when you have too much money chasing too few goods, your inflation rate is gonna be positive and possibly rising, okay? All right, so now what we're gonna do here is we're going to put these on the respective axes here, okay? And so we're going to bring forth our axes and we're gonna put the inflation rate denoted by pi on the y-axis. So remember this is still pi. And we're gonna take the growth rate of real GDP and put it on the x-axis. Now, what the aggregate demand curve does 
is assume a constant spending growth. Okay, so we have a constant spending growth here. Well, what is that spending growth? Well, we remember we dragged it from right here. The spending growth is the growth in the money supply plus the growth in the velocity, which is the number of times that money supply is being spent. Okay, so we can rewrite this in parentheses as the growth rate of M plus the growth rate of V. Okay. And so what this means is that we're going to have a slope here of negative one. Um, and so we can pick an inflation rate, say, 5%. And we'll put it right here. Okay. And down here, we can say that this is a growth rate of 0%. Okay. Well, if we were to plug this in here, if this is 5%, and this is 0%, then our spending growth must also be 5% for this equation to hold. Okay? And so the aggregate demand curve shows all the different combinations of an inflation rate and a real growth rate associated with a fixed or a constant spending growth rate. So we can go to the other side here. We can say, okay, what if you have um, a 5% real GDP growth rate? Put a tick right there. Okay. And then we can connect this with a straight line. And so this is our aggregate demand curve associated with a money supply growth rate plus velocity growth rate equal to 5%. Now, if you change the spending growth rate, you're going to have a change in the aggregate demand curve. The aggregate demand curve is going to have to shift because the relationship between inflation and real growth is already shown by this line right here. Okay, And so, if we have an increase in money supply growth, that's going to lead to increase in spending growth. And that would shift the aggregate demand curve out to the right. But if we have a decrease in money supply growth or a decrease in velocity growth, that would shift the aggregate demand curve to the left. We'll get more into details about that. But remember, all this is just different combinations. So if we had, say, a 2% inflation rate, then we could actually go till we hit the demand, aggregate demand curve and see that it's associated with a real GDP growth rate of 3%. So in that case, uh, it would be 2% inflation plus 3% real growth equals a 5% spending growth rate. Okay, And so that holds. All right, so again, the aggregate demand curve is associated with a certain level of spending growth. This is also known as nominal GDP growth. And it can be any combination of the inflation rate, the growth rate of prices, um, and the real growth rate that adds up to also the nominal GDP growth rate. And so as a result, you have this identity here that can help you um, make sense of where all the spending is going. Is it too much money chasing too few goods? Or is it too much production with not enough money? Thank you.